we, we're building a 9.4 mile roadway for buses, 11 stations and ways to get on and off of it. But it's what we do with that nine miles of roadway. Um, it, that's what CT Fast Track is. CT Fast Track is express buses coming in um, from Waterbury, Cheshire, and Southington. They'll be picking up at park and ride lots out there. They come in um, on I-84 until they can um, get off into uh, New Britain, get off at the downtown New Britain station, make a stop, pick some people up, and then express right into Hartford and stop at Sigourney Street and then go on and go right into downtown Hartford and deliver people directly to their door. We really attacked this corridor west of Hartford as a result of a uh, traffic study. They identified the corridor west of Hartford uh, as the most congested corridor in the region. As a result of that study, we looked at a number of alternatives, including commuter rail and light rail, bus rapid transit, high efficiency vehicle lanes, uh, as well as widening the highway and doing nothing to try and find what the most cost effective means were to uh, improve the operation of the transportation system in that corridor. The end result of the uh, project, the locally preferred alternative, was bus rapid transit. Uh, as part of that study, looked at what the, sp the travel speed is today on I-84 west of Hartford and what it would be with the number of trips that CT Fast Track could draw off the highway. And the peak hour speeds improved 11%. That means that now instead of three days out of five, you're stuck in stop and go traffic. Maybe only two days out of five, you're stuck in stop and go traffic. So CT Fast Track is indeed uh, an expensive product to build. The cost of construction and the cost of operation are actually elements in uh, what we have to consider as we pick alternatives. And in fact, building the CT Fast Track system uh, came out about half the price of building a rail system and about one-fifth of the price of widening the highway. In the end, the government really has a function, and one of those major functions is interstate commerce and mobility for its, its uh, citizens. And certainly, this is, a, this is a project that, while expensive, is going to offer a great many benefits. Uh, there's improvements to existing transit customers who now will have faster travel times between uh, points that they're traveling between. It'll benefit commuters on I-84 as we attract any traffic off of the highway. If you look at all of the bus rapid transit systems in the United States, some are better than others. They have all returned far more than they've actually cost. So um, when, we, when, we, when we think about that, and we think about that we have looked at those systems and we have taken the best aspects of each of those systems and put into uh, what is going to be CT Fast Track, I think that the Connecticut in this region is going to be getting something pretty special. When we were going for some funding at one point, we did do an estimate of job creation. Uh, 4,900 person years of work uh, that the money that's being invested in the design and construction of the project we're generating. It's, you know, on, during the construction period, it's 1,400 full-time, the equivalent of 1,400 full-time jobs during the two and a half year construction process. There's enough of a benefit in this project for what it could mean to uh, downtown Hartford as an employment center, for what it could mean to the Yukon Health Center as a hospital, or the University of Connecticut, what, could it, what it could mean to CCSU to really belong much more to the entire central Connecticut region. Uh, all of those things are benefits that while everybody doesn't benefit from every investment, there's certainly enough, enough benefit in this investment to go around. Uh, anybody who drives to the CCSU campus, if you're coming off Route 9, getting onto Fen Road or Cedar Street to get onto Manafort or uh, El Grasso Boulevard, that's one of the most congested intersections in Hartford County. So we certainly should have an impact on improving the traffic flow for some of those more localized intersections, giving students, faculty, and staff the opportunity to not have to drive to campus, uh, have, a, have a travel alternative that's really viable, that runs seven days a week, that runs long hours each day. This is that it's a tremendously viable um, option, particularly for young people to use, um, because it is cost effective, it's inexpensive, it's easy to access, it's clean, it's fast, and it gets them to a lot of different places. But also, as we were just talking about, it's sustainable. One of the reasons why we picked the corridor that we're in uh, is also because it's an old industrial corridor. There are a lot of redevelopment opportunities uh, in this corridor. So there's economic development benefits potentially for the project. So that's a significant attraction of customers potentially for us, but also new business for downtown New Britain. Interestingly, we will have connections with potentially three stations on that line from CT Fast Track, obviously the downtown Hartford Union Station that's there now, uh, as well as future planned stations at Newington Junction and at West Hartford, where you could make a transfer from CT Fast Track right to the train. So you can take the bus to the train station, and you can get down to New York or up to Boston, uh, 
as we revise the service plan, we're certainly looking for input of where, where else might people want to go. Uh, we have connections to um, Bristol, Waterbury, Cheshire, Southington, uh, routes that go out to Yukon Health Center. But as times change, we're going to be much, able to be much more flexible than if we had built a rail line and you're just kind of stuck on the tracks. And that's a, that's a big advantage, the flexibility that bus rapid transit offers that maybe light rail doesn't offer. Another one of the, um, the interesting services that we're going to be providing uh, is a connector service from the Sigourney Street Station to two hospitals in Hartford. Um, very cleverly, we've named it the um, Hospital Shuttle. Uh, and it, it connects Hartford Hospital and St. Francis. I can certainly see the value of not having to uh, navigate my way into um, unfamiliar territory. I can just take the bus easily and, and you know, transfer to this, this shuttle to get me right to the door. Uh, one of the things that really sets this apart from regular transit is how we're going to be incorporating technology into this project. Uh, that'll include everything from having automatic vehicle location so we know where the vehicles are. That then allows us to compare it to schedule, send you a text message if your bus is running late, uh, allows you to access when the next bus is coming uh, to your stop. We'll have variable message signs at the station so it'll just be like a real subway or light rail line where it says the next bus is coming in two minutes. We will make sure that the fare system is upgradable so as smartphone ticketing apps come into play, uh, we can use those as your proof of payment. The, the, the industry tends to change very slowly. This is a chance for us to really take a leap. It's something that Connecticut needs. It's something that we haven't had. We haven't had a transit system that does what this is going to in, to uh, enhance the transit system that we do have. So for me, it's 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 a hugely important thing to come back to a state that is moving into the 21st century um, in a smart way to enhance its economic development and using transit to help do that. So it's, I think it's an extraordinary project.